Hello, everybody, and welcome to your linear algebra review on examples of subspaces. My name is Jason, and I work for the ASU Tutoring Center. Now, uh, let's remember a vector vector space. It is what? It's a collection of vectors with a couple operations, and it satisfies these sort of like 10 axioms of being a vector space, right? So you need all of these conditions to be considered a vector space. Now a subspace is pretty much just a smaller piece of your vector space. So if you imagine like this whole area is your vector space. So this is the collection of all of your vectors and you can do a bunch of cool stuff with these vectors. You can add them together. You can multiply by scalars, all that fun stuff, right? A subspace is like a smaller piece of your vector space. Okay. So all of, the, all of the vectors in your vector space, all the vectors in your subspace, right? All these vectors that you have in here, whatever they might look like, usually little arrows, uh, exist within your bigger vector space. So there are a couple rules to be a subspace. So to be a subspace, you have to, you have to first of all, be a subset of your vector set. So for instance, if your bigger vector space is uh, R3, uh, to be a subspace, first and foremost, the only vectors within you have to be three dimensional vectors. If you have a, a vector that's like one, two within your subspace, well, it's not really a subspace because the vector one, two is a two dimensional vector, but our greater vector space is three dimensional. So all the vectors that are in W have to exist within the bigger vector space V. Okay, that's the first rule. Second rule, you have to be non-empty. Okay, you have to be non-empty. And typically, the easiest way to show non-empty, so non-empty just means there exists a vector within this, this space. Typically, the easiest way to show non-empty is to show that the zero vector is in your subspace. As long as you can show the zero vectors in there, then you're pretty set. That's typically the easiest way. And in fact, all vector, all subspaces, all subspaces must have, must have the zero vector. Every subspace must have the zero vector of your original vector space, every single one. So that's, that's why checking for zero is typically the easiest way to show it's not empty is because we know zero has to exist there. If zero does not exist there, then we know for a fact it is not a subspace. Uh, the other two rules, you have to be close, your closure properties have to hold. So you have to be uh, closed, I guess I'll say closed, closed under addition. So that means uh, if I take two vectors in W, then adding them together is also in W. And then the last one is you have to be closed under scalar multiplication. Okay, so if I were to take a scalar alpha and a vector u in my vector space w, then scaling u up by alpha is still in w. Okay, these are the four properties of being a subspace. So something to note, subspaces are themselves vector spaces. They're, they're just smaller vector spaces. Um, so then you're asking yourself, well, why don't we have to check all 10 of those properties? Well, all of those, the, the first eight properties, the, the quote unquote, the axioms of your vector space, all of them carry over to your subspace. So just in the fact that you are a subset that uses the same operations, those first eight axioms automatically hold. So then to check that it's a, it's a, it's a vector space, all you have to do really is check the closure properties and ensure that it's not empty. So by, by checking these four properties for a subspace, we are in fact showing that it is a vector space because all the other properties kind of hold over. Okay, but these are the four that you really need to check to show something's a subspace. And typically this first one, showing that it's a subset of a vector space um, is, is just kind of immediate, right? Like if you're working with R3, 
and it says these are all the vectors, they're all three dimensional vectors, well then you're done. You automatically know it's a subset. So really these bottom three are, are the big ones to check every single time. So let's see them in action. Let's see them in action. So what we're saying is we're verifying that the following non-empty subsets of R3 are also subspaces. So this is going to be like the collection of all vectors that satisfy this. So let me let this equal W. Okay. So for instance, let me give you examples of things that are in W. The vector 1, 2, 0, that's in W. The vector 87, 90, 2, 0, that's in W. Let me show you something that's not in W. The vector 1, 2, 1, that's not in W. Oh, also real quick, this notation, this means element of. Element of. It's like a, it's like a curvy, curvy E. And that basically just means this vector is inside of W. This one is just the curly E with a slash through it, which means it's not inside W. I know, mathematicians, very original. Um, but this one, th this one over here is not in W. Why? Because to be in W, the third component has to be zero. And in this case, it's not. So it doesn't matter what the first two components are. They can be whatever they want to be. But the third component has to be zero in order to be in W. So that's sort of like the rule. I always think about it as like, in order to get in your, your subspace, you have to follow the rules. And the rule in this case is that the third element has to be zero. If you're a vector whose third element is not zero, you're not allowed in W. Okay. So now we know what W is. Okay. So we have to verify some things. We have to first show it's not empty. I'm going to call this sort of like the zeroth property. We have to show W is not empty. In particular, we need to show the zero vector is inside W. Well, is the zero vector inside W? Is the vector zero, zero, zero? Is that inside W? Well, yes, it is. Right? How do we know? Because we look at the third component. Is the third component zero? Yes, it is. So because the third component is zero, we know it's in W. So we have verified that our vector, our, our subset W is in fact um, non-empty. Specifically, it has the zero vector. Okay, the next things, what are the next things we have to show? We have to show it's closed under addition. Closed under addition. Uh, how do we do this? So we take two arbitrary vectors in W. Okay, so I'm gonna take the vector x1, x2, zero, and the vector y1, y2, zero in W. So again, they have to be completely arbitrary vectors. So I can't give actual numbers for the first two components, the x1, the x2, the y1, the y2. I can't give actual numbers. I have to leave them as symbols, okay? But the third component has to be zero again, because that's how we make sure that it's in W. So I took two arbitrary elements in, and now what do I have to do? When I add them together, that addition also has to be in W. So let me add them together x1, x2, 0, plus y1, y2, 0. And, and because it didn't specify, we are to assume we're using the standard addition and scalar multiplication, the usual ones, right, where we just add component-wise. So if I add these together, I get x1 plus y1, I get x2 plus y2, and I get 0 plus 0, which is 0. So then you have to ask yourself, is this, is this vector that I just found, is this in W? question mark. How can we tell? We have to look at the third component. The third component needs to be zero. Is the third component zero? It is. Therefore, we are in fact inside W. So what I did is I took two arbitrary vectors in W. I didn't give them numbers. I just gave them symbols. Two arbitrary vectors. I added them together and I showed that they're, they're the vector that I get when I add them together is also in W. Therefore, we are closed under addition. And then the last property we have to check is closed under scalar multiplication. Okay, so what do I do? I take an arbitrary real number. So this, this means real numbers. And this is alpha the Greek letter alpha. So I'm taking an arbitrary real number and I'm going to take an arbitrary vector. 
I'm taking an arbitrary alpha in the real numbers, picking an arbitrary vector in W. And what am I going to do with these? I'm going to scale or multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take alpha times x1, x2, 0. And remember how scalar multiplication works. It means you multiply by every component. So we get alpha x1, alpha x2, and then alpha times 0, anything times 0 is 0. Then we have to ask ourselves, is this in W? And again, we look at the, the last component, the third component, and the third component is 0. And because the third component is 0, that tells us that it is, in fact, in W. Check mark. Therefore, W is a subspace. We've checked all the properties. First of all, it's a subset, right? Because these are three-dimensional vectors, and it's a subset of the three-dimensional vectors. We've verified that it's non-empty. We've verified it's closed under addition, and it's closed under scalar multiplication. Because we've checked all of those rules, W is a subspace of R3. And again, really, when you, when you describe a vector space, you need to describe the vector space as well as the, the addition rule and the scalar multiplication rule. But if I ever just say R3, like three-dimensional space, it's, you are to assume that the addition is the standard addition and the scalar multiplication is the standard scalar multiplication. Okay, if it's never specified, just assume, assume they're the regular ones. Okay, cool. So we verify that W is in fact a subspace. In future videos, we will look at examples of subsets that fail to be subspaces. All right, so thank you all for watching. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. Um, so if you want to look at the free resources we have on all four major ASU campuses and online, please check out tutoring.asu.edu. If you want to look at other concept videos like this one that go over specific concepts from your course, or you want to see what upcoming review sessions we have for the exams in your course, go ahead and check out this link below. Again, uh, thank you all very much and have a wonderful day.